for the time, would you open the word of prayer, please? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, our Father, for this morning and for all the blessings we have. And God, to think that one day that we'll all sit down together in heaven, that we'll be there to worship you and praise you. And Father, this morning, God, as we come together to worship you, Father, we thank you that, God, you blessed us with a Savior. And I pray this morning, Father, that, God, if there's one that doesn't know Jesus, that God, this morning, their heart might realize that he died for them. Yes, thank you. God bless this morning, Father, in the service. I pray, our Father, that, Lord, you'll touch our pastor as he preaches that precious word, yes. Lord, what you pinned upon his heart. Yeah, this this morning, I pray, Father, that it'll reach out and touch our hearts this morning. God, how we thank you for each other. We thank you for our church. Bless, Lord, this morning we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Bibles. We're going to go over the book of uh, Joshua, Joshua chapter 22. Let me just read uh, some of these passages. It's, it's a, a, a kind of a long story, but I'm going to paraphrase a little bit. But uh, uh, let me uh, jump down to Joshua chapter 22, verse 10. It says, And when they came into the borders of Jordan, there the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben, the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh built there an altar by Jordan, a great altar to see. Verse 12, it says, And when the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up to war against them. We find two and a half tribes built an altar, and they were kind of shocked, the other tribes. And uh, we're going to find they were on the other side of Jordan. And uh, they were upset when they heard this, so they came, and they said, we're, we're going to have war against them. I mean, it was God's people they had war against. Well, they came to them, in verse 21, said, And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered and said unto the heads of the thousands of Israel, The Lord God of gods, the Lord of God of gods, he knoweth that in Israel he shall know, if it be in rebellion or in transgression against the Lord. Save us not this day. That we have built an altar to turn from following the Lord or to offer thereon burnt offerings or meat offerings. 
or if to offer peace offerings thereon, let the Lord himself require. And if ye have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying, In time to come your children might speak unto our children, saying, What have ye to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord hath made Jordan a border between us and you. I want to pause there a second. Uh, you'll find the majority of God's desire was to cross the Jordan. But these two and a half tribes, they desired to stay behind. And they decided to dwell there. And there was a river between them. And they, they erected this altar they want, as a re reminder. And it says that uh, uh, ye have no part in the Lord. So shall your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. Verse 26. Therefore... We said, let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offering, not for sacrifice, but it may be a witness between us and you and our generations after us, that we might do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings, with our sacrifices, with our peace offerings, that your children may not say to our children in time to come, you have no part in the Lord. Therefore said we that it shall be when they shall so say to us or to our generations in time to come that we may say again, Behold the pattern of the altar of the Lord, which our fathers made not for burnt offerings nor for your sacrifices, but it is a witness between us and you. Um, just jump down to verse 34. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar... Ed, for it shall be a witness between us that the Lord is God. A while back, well, I preached the sermon where Jesus went across. It was one of the greatest stories in the Bible, one of the oddest stories I shared. Uh, they went into the land of the Gadarenes. And when they got over there, across the Jordan, across the, the, the sea, they, they, they encountered a man, a man that was full of demons. And you find this land, this, this area, was a land, uh, really it was a, a demonic place. So much that even one man had a legion of demons in him, which was 6,000. I believe it was a place the old devil liked to hang out over there. And you find it was a place where they were raising hogs. I said, we know that hogs is an unclean animal. They ought to have been raising sheep for the sacrifice for God. But they were raising uh, the unclean animal that God said don't eat. By the way, uh, that's changed. We can eat hog Am I? today, praise the Lord. But awful, it was a place of rejection. This land that Jesus came to, when they saw Jesus, you know what they said to him? Would you please, they pleaded, would you please leave our country. Can you imagine that's an awful thing to say to our God? You know, I believe our nation is heading that way. They don't want you to pray in the name of Jesus. You know what they're saying? Leave. Yeah. It's an awful thing. But as I thought that, what happened to that country? What happened to those people? over there, that the land became such a place of rejection of God. We're going to find in our story here, and we know the story of Israel, let me just re remind you here this morning what happened. Israel was in bondage for 400 years. God did a miraculous work. God heard their cry. God showed up. He miraculously spared them with, while the plagues were coming down upon the Egyptians. He spared the Israelites. God did that. And the last plague we know was the death angel. The death angel came through the, the town there and they said, we will spare you as long as you take that little lamb and you take the blood of the lamb and you put it on the doorpost there. And that night, it was an awful night. A God, the death angel came through and he went through houses there. But praise God, when he saw the blood that was applied to the doorpost there, he passed them by and there was no death. God did that for right. him. Amen. You know, as I thought about that, praise God, that's what he's done for me. Amen. One day I'll stand before God and you know what? 
uh, when, when God looks down upon me, I'm glad to tell you what, you know why I can say it's well with my soul? It's not because I've been a good boy. It's because the blood yes. was up. Amen. Amen. Woo, aren't you glad for that? Yes. Woo, amen. We ought to be excited about that. Yes. Well, not only would he miraculously spare them, but we find that what did he do? He delivered them from Pharaoh. And then as they came and they're leaving, they're excited. But then they came against the Red Sea. We know the story. Pharaoh's coming in his chariot. Fact is, they thought to themselves, I've shared it before, what should we do? Should we try swimming across? You know what? There's many today that are trying to save themselves by swimming across. You're going to drown. Mm -hmm. But you know what Moses said? He said, stand still. I like the verse. Mm -hmm. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He took his rod down there. The sea, the sea parted over there. They walked on dry land. They walked across. Yep. A million of them got on the other side. They looked back. The chariots are coming through the water. The Pharaoh is. And right then in the middle, the water came down. And the enemy was gone. Yep. Hallelujah. God did that That's right. for these people. Think about it. Not only did it that, He led them through the wilderness. He didn't just leave and say, well, now you're saved, now you're okay, you're on your own. No, they had a leader, praise God. And you mark it down, the, the, during the day there was a cloud. And if that cloud started to move, then take up camp. Hurry up, kids. Come on, grab it. Grab the goat. Grab whatever it is. We're moving. God is moving. So are we. Yeah. Amen. If it was in the middle of the night, it was a pillar of fire. It's just moving. They had their eye on it. They wanted to make sure. And they were being led of God. What a wonderful thing to be led of God. And then you know the story. They came to the promised land. And they said, see over yonder, that's where we're going. They sent some spies over there. And they came back, and we know Jacob and our John, John and Caleb, they said, Woo, praise God, let's go! But the others said, oh boy, I don't know, there's giants over there. We ain't going. God wanted to lead them over there. Yeah. But we know what happened. That lack of faith they didn't, they didn't follow God over there. It put a stop to everything for 40 years. So for 40 years, they dwelt, went in circles, in the wilderness. And while they're in the wilderness, by the way, God took care of them. That's right. Food came down every morning from heaven. Yeah. You say, well, I can't get to Walmart. I can't get to Kroger's. They didn't have to go anywhere. They That's just right. got up there every morning, and there was food. Amen. The yeah. Bible calls it angel food. Now, I don't know. That encouraged me. One day I get to heaven, I'm going to eat me something. Amen. <laughs> Not only did that, the Bible says for 40 years, the shoes didn't wear out. Amen. That's a miraculous thing of God. Yeah. God provided for them. He protected them. And, and now the 40 years is about over. Mm. And here's what really happened. I'm gonna, let me read for you in Numbers chapter, I mean, Exodus. I don't even know where I'm at. <laughs> Numbers. Numbers 32. And everyone's getting excited. We're crossing over to the promised land. This is what God has been promising us for 40 years. There's been young people. They've been growing up. They've heard about it. They're exciting. Can you imagine? We're finally there. But in verse 30, chapter 32 of Numbers, it says in verse 1, Now the children of Reuben, the children of Gad, had a very great multitude of cattle. And when they saw the land of Jazar, the land of Gilead, that behold, the place was a place for cattle. The children of Gad and the children of Reuben came and spake unto Moses and to Elijah the priest, and unto the princes of the congregation, saying, let me jump down there in verse 5, Wherefore said they, if we have found grace in thy sight, let this land be given unto thy servants for possessions. 
And notice what it says, and bring us not over Jordan. I want you to know what happened to that land of uh, Gadarene. They didn't go on the other side. These people said, I'm satisfied. Right here, we don't want to go. But for 40 years, God had a plan. He wanted them to cross the Jordan River. But they said, please, we just want to stay here. Hmm. What an awful thing. We find, as I read the story there, here's what they did. They decided, I don't want the, the other tribes to forget who we are. So they built an altar. And they called it Ed. Quite a name, huh? Mm -hmm. Ed means witness. <coughs> I want to I share some things here. That was all my introduction here. I want to share what happened to these people. What happened to them? I want you to know this morning, it's not okay to dwell on the other side. Yeah. God wants you to go all the way. Amen. So we find, uh, what happened? The first thing that we find that happened, I believe they had a problem of conviction. You know what? Uh, we all have that problem. You know, they, were, they had a conviction of the flesh. You know what the flesh says? I like it here. Hmm. I want to do what I want to do. Anybody got any of that flesh in you? Yeah. Yeah. They had the same problem you and I have. Their conviction was in the flesh. I want you to know this morning, it ought to be on the facts. You know what the facts are? The Word of God. Amen. Yeah. And you know what the Word of God says? It tells us God said He wanted them to cross over into the promised land. In Joshua chapter 1, uh, verse 7, let me read, read that to you. Joshua told him right off the bat, he said, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe them all according to the law. That's the Word of God. That's the facts. Which Moses, my servant, commanded thee, Turn not from it to the right hand, nor to the left, that thou mayest prosper. Wheresoever thou goest, this book of the law shall not be part of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That's the Word of God. Amen. Now, if you're honest here this morning, you know what gets in my way of the Word of God? The flesh. And what happened to them? They had a problem there. They, they didn't want to go all the way. God's plan did not change. He wanted them to cross the Jordan. He said, follow me. Don't matter how you feel, just do it. Yeah. We find uh, the flesh won the battle, folks. On the wrong side. You know the Bible said, for I am the Lord, I change not. Yeah. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. We can count on him. Amen. And from, from day one, from day one in the Bible, the devil has been trying to change the Word of God. That's right. You know, uh, Brother Cody preached the first night on the Scripture. Yeah. There's power in it. I know last, last Sunday, I think, uh, or two Sundays ago, maybe I don't know what Sunday it was, uh, Gary, he, he spoke on the, the Bible. He said, this is the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. And he said, he, didn't, he said, he don't like people using this as the King James translation. You know what? I, I'm not, I'm not, it's not translation, it's the Word of God. That's right. And you know, uh, not everyone agrees, but I, I tell you, I'm very, I, I, I'm against any other. Amen. And the reason I'm against it, a devil is very subtle. Mm -hmm. I know one of the preachers that was here, he kind of got that jab on the King James Bible, and you could tell he was kind of making a little fun of it. Okay, and I had a little talk with him in the back back there about it. And uh, he said, well, I've looked at this. I think you know that. And uh, I said, that's a devil has been trying to change it from day one. Amen. And you know what? I don't need another Bible. Amen. I don't need another version. That's right. You know, uh, they, don't realize, and, and I don't, they don't realize the harm. Now they've got the Queen James Bible. Now they've got all these. You go to the, book, the store. It can't be good, all these changes.
they, uh, we went to that one church there where they sang at, and I'm still kind of fired up that place there. I, I, I'm kind of shocked when you go to the churches. The good people seem very nice, but you know what? They just believe whatever they want. That's right. I was reading about there, they believe in baptism. Well, you can be baptized as a baby. You can be baptized as an adult. You can be baptized, you can be sprinkled. <laughs> or if it's your preference, you can be immersed. You can be uh, baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Or whatever gender you prefer. Mm. That's what it said. God help them. You know what? I'm going to stick to the Bible. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And I tell you what, they like it when we change. they got gender Bibles now. Hey, you say, well, that's all, nothing wrong about that. They're all the same. No, they're not all the same. That's right. Some are better than others, but I tell you what, we've, it's come to the point where we've got to water down and the devil likes it. I don't, know, I don't want to get too far from that, but the problem is there. They had a conviction problem. You know what they weren't going by? They weren't going by the Word of God. They were going by the flesh. We ought not stray from the Word of God. Amen. Well, they had a conviction problem. And if we're honest here, you say, what's wrong with us today? What's wrong with the church today? We get, the, we, we get our flesh in there instead of the Word of God. Yep. We've got to be careful. Yep. I hear people say, well, this is how I feel. Well, I probably feel that way too, but I can't. <laughs> I'm going to go and see what God says about it. Yeah. And if they would have been sensitive, you know what God said? Go across the Jordan. Don't stay behind. Amen. Well, they, they had a conviction problem. They also had a convincing problem. They felt they needed to make an altar. It was an imitation of the altar that God's plan that he made there. He said, make an altar. and had all the dimensions and all that. They had everything, just the same thing. They said, we're going to make one of them. We're going to set it out there by the shore. And when people see it, we want them to know we are also God's people. Amen. That's why, they, that's why they did it. They were trying to convince others they were okay. You know, I, I face that every day, it seems like. It seems like a lot of folks got an altar ed in their life. They do, they got an altar ed. It's a witness. You talk to them and they say, are you safe? Uh, yeah, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm safe. And they say, I went to church. I was baptized as a kid. I was baptized as a baby. I was all this. I've done this. You know what? I, I, I love the Lord. I believe in God. Let me tell you what, just because you believe in God don't mean you're saved. That's right. People got that believe in God as an altar of heaven. Say, look at that. I believe in God, so I'm all right. Hmm. I think I, Brother Tom was telling me he was talking to somebody. And he was talking to them. And, and uh, he, he asked them, are you saved? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm saved. I, you know, I did this, I've done that, I've this, that, I believe in God. But then you know what he asked him? This really gets folks. I mean, I tell you what, don't get mad at me. Uh, you can take the trip back, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> he said, well, do you go to church somewhere? That's good. Ah, uh, no. But I want you to know I'm God's child. I got an altar of head over here. It's just an imitation. It's not the real thing. But I want you to know I'm okay. I'm not convinced. Yeah. I know years ago, I, 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 many, I could give many things. I remember years ago, I, I, one was out of church, and we went to visit them. And I mean, been out for months and months. And it just, I just couldn't get it. I just can't figure out how a child of God can get out of church. And you know what I said? I said, how are you spiritually? I mean, I wasn't even a preacher. I wasn't even, I don't think I even called a preacher yet. I just was aggravated. I said, oh, how are you spiritually? And you know, I was shocked. Oh, we've never been closer to God. Hmm. I don't believe it. I don't believe it one bit. It was an altar bed. We, uh, They were trying to convince others that they were okay. We have a nation today is trying to convince us they're okay. Yes. We got folks in church that are just trying to convince us. Just because you come to church, by the way, don't mean you're okay. True. It's just an altar of egg you put up there and say, look at me. You got religion. And you know why I want you to know what's a sad thing? This 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 method of convincing. It didn't work. It, 
became the land of Gardenes. Hmm. Yeah. Like Gadenes. That's the tribe of Gad became the Gadrenes. We find here where they said, I don't want Jesus. Isn't that sad? Amen. It didn't work. Kind of goes along with it. You know what they also had? They had a, a conviction problem, a convincing, but they had a concern problem. I think uh, we've got to be careful. I get wrapped up into this. We get on the wrong concern. You know what they said? We read there in, in, in Numbers. They looked at the land, and you know what they saw? This is a good place for cattle. That's what they said. You know what they were concerned about? Their cattle. Makes me think of Lot. He looked down there, and he said, boy, those are green pastures down there. That's where I'm going to go. You know what? He had a concern problem. They're more concerned about the cattle than they are the children. Yeah. The generations to come. We need to have a, our concern. We've got to watch out on that. We find here. I wonder this morning, you have a concern for the children. You know, when I say the children, I'm talking about the unlearned, the, the lost. You know, you say, folks, I got, an, I, I got my altar of Ed over here. I'm okay. But are you concerned about others being saved? That's right. yeah. I don't believe it if you don't go to church hmm. that you're concerned about anyone else getting saved. Oh, they're not going knocking on doors. They're not telling anybody. They're not asking anybody. There's no concern. It's not in the right spot. You know, they haven't gone all the way. They're staying behind there. God said, cross the Jordan. Amen. It's a better place over there. It may look good here, but go all the way. You know, I'm going to tell my message, are you, it says saved. I'm not talking about saved, folks. Saved, but living on the other side of Jordan. Hmm. You can be saved and still living on the wrong side of Jordan. That's right. They had a concern problem. Moses said, I'm concerned you're going to discourage the people. The fact is, it did discourage the people. You know what? Uh, and I, I'm kind of, you know, I'm glad to be here this morning. Yeah. You know, I came here for Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Woo, praise God. I came to worship Him. I claimed to sing to Him. I came to meet with Him. Yeah. But you know what? I also came for you. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that song should be on the list. It is on the list. Right. We just didn't come for Him, we came for each other. I'm glad y'all uh, were all that were able to come to revival because you know what that did? That encouraged me. Yeah. And you know what it did when you saw others there? It encouraged you. Yeah, yeah. Did it? Yeah. But we don't always like to go all the way. But we don't realize there's a big important, big important concern we have, and that's the lost. That's the saved that are going through rough times. We're here to encourage uh, one another. You know what? Uh, if I asked you, uh, who would like to see the church grow? Oh yeah, Brother Brad, I'd like to see him grow! We'll show up. Amen. That's yeah. good. Man. Isn't that right? Yep. No, don't be mad at me. If I asked you, who would like to see Sunday school grow? Amen. Amen. You know what I'd say? Show up! Amen. That's good. We say, well, that's not my thing. I don't care. It's not all about you. That's right. That's right. It's about others. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've had. Maybe it's a Wednesday or a Sunday night. I say, is this all that come? I, there's a lot more on Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. We don't encourage each other like we're supposed to. Yeah. We're still back on the other side of Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about us. You know what that was about? It was about them. We got to get past that about us. The world don't revolve around you. God's everything don't go around you. Praise God, as I said recently, amen, when Paul and Silas was in prison, it wasn't about them. It was about the jailer who needed saved. Amen. Yeah, that's right. We find a concern problem. And I thought, now, if everyone had attendance like you, how would the church do go? <laughs> if everyone tithed like you do, how would the church be? If everyone uh, uh, came up, whatever it is, if they were like, if everyone was like you and thought like you, you know what? We wouldn't have a Wednesday. We wouldn't have a Sunday night. The churches, big churches all around, they don't even they don't have Wednesday night. We had a preacher here on Wednesday night. They have a big church in Madison, and they don't have it. 
You say, well, I don't know about that. You know, it's, again, you know, these folks here, they were more concerned about the cattle than they were the children. Yeah. And help us, amen. There's something wrong. Please, let's try to go all the way. I mean, I know there's things, and we're not all, we all got different uh, situations, but God knows what we can do or not do. Amen. Yeah. We find here, not only did they have a concern problem, but they had a conformed, compromising problem. You know, uh, there's one thing that, that divided the divided the, the Israelites from the enemy. And you know what it was? The Jordan River. Mm -hmm. You know what? You look today on the map. You know what? It, you know what divides Israel from the enemy? The Jordan River. Amen. And you know what these folks did? They decided it's okay to live amongst the enemy. You dwell amongst the enemy. The enemy is going to rub off on you. Yeah. You may have heard this illustration. I've heard it before. A, a king was looking for a, a one to drive a chariot. And he said, I, I he had had some interviews, and he, he and the, the road was very treacherous and cliffs and just dropped down like that. And he talked to the first one he interviewed and said, How close would you get to that uh, uh, the edge there? And he said, Well, I'm a good driver. I tell you, I'm an expert. I tell you, I can get right up to the edge. You'll be all right. King says, You can go your way. <coughs> Next one came in and says, Well, I wouldn't get right up to it. I'd go about three feet from it, uh, knowing I'm trying to protect you. I, I'm a very good driver. And he said, well, you can go your way. The third one came and said, said how, how close would you get? He said, I don't know. He said, I, I, he said, I don't want to know. I ain't going to get any close. I'm not going to get close to that edge there. Because you're the king, and my responsibility is towards you. Amen. Yeah. You know what? Uh, we're good at I like to see how close I can get to the edge. Mm. You better watch out. Yeah. yeah. You know what? You know what is at stake here? The generations to follow. Yeah. Amen. These folks had a pretty good you study them. They did good. They even got involved in battles. They did things. But you know what? That's some 1,400 years later, you find it's a pagan place full of the devil, and they don't want Jesus in there. Mm. That's what happened to them. I saw a phrase this week. I just liked it. You know what? They ought to have been saints. But you know what they were? Ain'ts. That's good. That's right. Well, say, but living on the other side of Jordan. They conformed. They, they compromised. By the way, they had an altar. Oh, wow. Altar called that. See it over there? Hey, it's a whole lot different, this altar is, than the one you cross the river and you get over there uh, with the Israelites, amen. The ones that went across, they had the real one. Amen. You know what that real one had? It had fire that came down from heaven, amen, and praise God consumed their sacrifices. That's right. This altar had no sacrifices. Oh, but we, we love the Lord. We're, we're still part of you. Don't you forget it. This altar, the, their altar had one of no power. Woo, praise God, I like to get in the place where there's the power, don't you? Amen. Cross the Jordan. Get on the other side. Get there where you need to be. Stop holding back, praise God. God's got a better place. By the way, you know what is also there? There on the other side of Jordan, it was God's presence. He went at that other altar, imitation altar. Hmm. Folks, forget how wonderful it is to have the presence of God. I'm talking about God's people. Now, lost folks say, amen. Not on the outside, though. He wants in. Amen. But when you're saved, when he's in there, we sang that this morning. It's well. Is it well with your soul? Amen. It's wonderful. It's wonderful if you have it well with my soul. Praise God. But we find that they compromised. Well, just a couple more here. They, they also had a content problem. You know, they were content. Content. They convinced themselves, I'm okay. I shared it recently, and we're going to get to it in our study of Revelation, the Laodicean church. They were content. We're living in the day of content. We're fine. We're okay. 
We're rich, they said. But God says, I know you better. You're poor. You're wretched. Yeah. You're a mess. Yeah. In fact, as I shared last Sunday night, I think about this. You're lukewarm. You know what? Uh, we went last night to Seymour and we ate at the Sunshine restaurant over there and I got my coffee. And I don't know. It sure gets cold quick. So I said, yeah, I'll have a little warm-up. Amen. But then I noticed, well, I paid for this. It's kind of lukewarm again. I just can't keep on warming it up and warming it up. I, you know what I did? I became content. I thought, I'll just drink it. And I didn't even like it. God don't do that. He said, I'm going to spit you out. Yeah. And the fact is, if we're content, you and I ought not be content in a relationship with God. Yeah. If I say to you, uh, and again, I said, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know what? But you know what? I could be doing better. Mm. You're doing fine? You could be doing better. Don't be satisfied. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of temperatures between lukewarm and hot or lukewarm and cold, isn't there? I don't know where on the scale. Well, I'm not lukewarm, but you're not hot. You know what? We get content. Mm. These folks were content, dwelling on the other side, not striving for the mastery, not striving for the high calling of God, not striving to go on the more and more. We have a generation that depends upon us. They look down on the future. They can only see in the future what has happened because they refuse to cross over. Yeah. What a mess. You'll find the end of that. The Bible says in Numbers 32, where we were reading in verse 23, it says, Behold, your sin will find you out. Yep. And you know what happened? They got into captivity. You'll find there, we won't turn there, but they were taken over. People that at one time were set free. You know what? You can be saved and still be bound. Yeah, that's right. I want to encourage you to go all the way. Fanny Crosby was saying a song, All the way my Savior leads me. She wrote that when she was having a financial issue in her life. And it's just hard to believe she had a lot of issues. She was blind. And she needed, she needed an, uh, some money. And she prayed about it. And it just so happens, it wasn't luck. God intervened. Somebody came by and gave her five dollars. You know how much money Fanny Crosby needed? Five dollars. And through that experience, she said, all the way, my Savior leads me. Amen. <clears throat> you know, there's areas in my life I need to go all the way. There's areas I just hold back. You know what? That's my flesh. It's about me. It's not about others. It's all about the cattle. It's not about the children. What areas do we need to go all the way? You know what? I'm glad he calls us. He didn't, and by the way, he didn't say, now you get going, you get over there. He led them. That's what he wants to do for us. Let's not hold back. Whatever it is, we're all different. God knows our circumstances. Amen. But you know what? We need to be open. We need to have a spiritual ear and say, Lord, what, what more? Not less. John the Baptist said, He must increase. I must decrease. Help us this morning. Let's all stand. Father, we thank you. Lord, what an awful story that comes out in the Bible of a generation down the road that son God doesn't want anything to do with Jesus. And where did it start? It started because of a people that said, nah, I'm satisfied with right where I'm at. Lord, we ought not be satisfied. Let's press on, Lord. Let's move on for you. Lord, convict our hearts. You know what areas of our not life we need to resituate. We need to change. Our flesh says no, but the Spirit says yes. Lord, we want to be an encouragement to the generations. We want to be encouragement to one another. Help us, Lord, to stay clear of the, the enemy, which is 
in that place that oftentimes we dwell. You've got a better place secure for us, Lord. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your mercy. We fail you miserably. But Lord, again, you call us every day. It says, well, let's, let's go again. Let's try again today. Lord, you deserve more. It's not less. Forgive us, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every eye uh, closed, every head bowed this morning. What side of the Jordan are you? I don't care who you are, if you're honest, there's areas in our life we're still on the other side. It might be tradition, it might just be things how they've always been. No, let's, let's let him lead us. He won't lead you wrong. Right. He might lead you somewhere you not necessarily want to go at times, but praise God, he's going to take care of you. let the flesh have its way. It's the Word of God. I mean, you might convince others everything's alright, but you know what? God knows. He knows that altar over there. That's just imitation. It's not a real one. You say, well, I believe. Praise God. I'm glad you do. Devil believes. How's your concern? Oh, we all need more concern. Help us, Lord, to be an encourager, not a discourager. All the way, my Savior leads me. There's still more, there's still rarity, there's still a place He's drawing us.